Today I'm going to replace the driver's side seatbelt on my wife's 2014 Nissan 370Z and in the process I'm going to remove the driver's seat and a bunch of plastic panels and so I thought I would make a video just to show how that's done in case it helps you do it a little more easily. First thing I did was make sure the seat was in the right position to get to the bolts and then I removed the negative cable on the battery. Since this car is a base model with uh, manually adjusted seats, I didn't have to worry about putting the seat into the right position before I disconnected the terminal and I could just slide it back. The bolts on the seat have these little plastic caps on top. You remove those just by getting a screwdriver, put it up underneath them. You just kind of got to get in between the top of the bolt base and the plastic cap and pry it up. Looks like that. I always like to start hard bolts with a breaker to get them loose. And this is a 14 millimeter socket. With those out, I'm going to move the seat all the way to the front position. So now we can see both the rear bolts after you move all the junk that your wife keeps behind her seat. And so this is the reason that I'm doing the seat belt replacement is because you can see it's just lying down there in a pile and won't retract anymore. I went through and tried to figure out if the routing was incorrect and somehow it was binding and I fixed all that and still when the seat belt pays out it doesn't want to pull back in again. So I tried to clean it, tried everything else I could think of. I've actually been in here once before and got down to the seatbelt mechanism to see if there was something wrong and in the end I decided that I just have to buy a new seatbelt from Nissan. And I did that, we're gonna put it in. Next step is to get both of these lower belt bolts out. Whoa. Safety glasses. As you would expect, all the seat bolts are pretty tight. And this is probably not necessary. I'm sure I could do this seat belt just by sliding it forward and sitting in the little space in the back. But on the 370Z, the rear space it's just so cramped and you have to remove this entire plastic plate in the back and it's just a small place to crawl around in. So I'm not interested in that and I'm gonna just take the seat out and do it the longer but more comfortable way. I'm shooting this with my GoPro Hero 9, which is really terrific because I can get a preview of what the camera is seeing without having to get my head under there. There are three plugs that have to be disconnected beneath the seat. They all tie into this wiring harness down here. And so you got to disconnect those before you can get the seat to actually pop up without putting strain on the wiring harness. So if you pick the seat up so that the back mounting points are lifted off of the studs in the floor, you can actually tilt the seat way back. So I folded the seat back forward as far as I could and now I can pitch the whole thing up and get to all these plugs without having to just guess how they disconnect. One of those videos where I have no idea what's happening before I get started and I'm figuring out as I go along. 
So you get to be in the discovery process. You just have to put up with the research and development. So each of these cables that are attached to the bottom of the seat have clips that are attached to the seat springs and there are specialized zip ties that have a little T-prong attached to them so that they can snap right into those clips. Taking the clips off is not easy. Actually, the yellow clips, I mean. So I'm gonna cut through the zip ties in that location and that location and up here. And then I'm gonna replace them with zip ties going through the clips when I'm finished, leaving the yellow clips in place. So you could see those were pretty easy to cut, but I did not want to mess up the wiring harness on these guys. There and here by trying to cut that zip tie, which is pinching into the shielding. So I tore out the clip behind it, expecting to run a zip tie through the hole where it was previously installed. Did the same thing right there. This part of the harness has a replaceable clip which connects the white clip to the frame of the seat pan. It'll be hard to see but it's inside there and it's a pinch clip, the little white part that pokes through the sheet metal. So I'm going to use an awesome pair of bent nose needle nose pliers to reach in there and pinch both sides of it. That was pretty easy. I managed to pinch the two sides of that clip depressing it and it slipped back through the hole that it was in in the sheet metal. As you may have figured out way ahead of me, there was no reason at all for me to remove that gray, light gray cable with the yellow tape on it. Um, it actually connects to the seat and to the seat. So that's part of the R&D process. But I gotta get this white cable out of the way. And it just has a pinch clip right on the bottom. You press up with my index finger and it pulls sideways. I love this yellow connector because it's not a matter of muscle, it's just a matter of knowing where the spring release is. This white piece at the front, hard to see because of the bar, the white section on the front is a spring. Grab it with your fingernail, draw it toward my arm, and just slide the whole clip out. And then the whole seat is free with just those two clips. So the whole seat is out. Again, much easier than the way that I did it. This wire, that clip, and this clip were all unnecessarily destroyed, and that's how it goes. Here's the floor of the car with the seat completely removed. The only cable that is holding it together, the two clips that got removed, and then this one better view of the clip that connects this harness to the bottom of the seat. All right, now I can start grabbing away at all the different bolts that hold the seatbelt in place and try and get the replacement done. So the big plan is I'm gonna remove the seatbelt anchor bolt. I'm gonna remove the retractor harness guide. I'm gonna remove the bolt at the back of the center console so that I can lift that up and then get to the plate that is where the rear seat is in a different model car. Cause I've got to lift that up in order to get this plastic panel on the wall removed because the retractor mechanism is down there. First I'm going to take out the bolt for the seat belt anchor. That's a captured bolt and I haven't opened the new seat belt yet but maybe the same bolt is already attached on the new part and I don't have to remove this. If you don't already have them, it's time to go out and buy some cool pry bar tools that will keep you from messing up your interior. This one's made out of nylon, Harbor Freight. This one came with the temporary fastener kit that I bought. Um, has a nice L hook and you can get it behind those fasteners and pop them out. And this one's got the whole pliers action and I'm probably gonna use them all before we're done. 
you got to get the plastic cover off of the upper seat belt bolt just pries off comes off in your hand got to remove that bolt also a 14 millimeter you can hear it was pretty tight Now I got to pop this plastic trim piece off. See a little bit of it started right there. But the whole thing won't come off until I get the center console back plate off. So before I can get the entire trim plate to come off, I've got to get this whole piece off right here. It's not terribly complicated, but it is a big chunk and it has to go behind the passenger seat and everything like that. So we're going to start by removing that bolt right there. It's just a simple Phillips. You got to remove the identical screw from the other side of the center console. You can see it's a little more cramped without actually taking the seat out. But in the end, you may look at this and decide that I wasted my time taking the seat out of the way and you can do it without that. Next thing we got to get the cover panels off the back deck. They're just felt pads that have to be pried up because they have single-use fasteners attaching them to the car that you just pry out. This is one of those moments when it's good to have a bunch of different pry tools because it's hard to figure out how to get a pry tool to go down behind this ledge without scratching it up. And so what I did was I took this tool and I got it right in here and pried up. And then you can work it the rest of the way out. Sorry. And so this is what you're working against as you pry. There's those original Nissan clips. And I won't be surprised if that clip means that somebody has pried this panel off before I got here. But those down there are the replaceable plastic fasteners that you have to get out of the way in order to pull off the center panel. And just as a side note, these are actual clips. That was where the red one went right there. And this one is not a clip at all, it's just a foam pad. There's no actual hole underneath it. So the left edge of the passenger side panel has two clips. The right edge has the red clip at the front and the foam pad at the back. So you gotta get these push fasteners out you can use a screwdriver and slide it in sideways, but you can see it's kind of hard to get to where they're at. I'm almost embarrassed to show you this, but this is a pair of needle nose pliers that I took a torch and heated up really hot and <laughs> bent the tips so that I could make myself a tool that would get in behind those fasteners. And here's the other side. So here's what it looks like removing those clips for real. This is the driver's side. We know from looking at it that there's probably a clip right here and then a foam pad right there, but I haven't seen it yet. So I'm gonna use that same pry tool. I'm gonna use a latex glove just to protect the plastic because I wanna pry right there without hurting my wife's car. I'm just gonna get in there. Oops, that's what happens. And so that's how simple it is to get it to pop up. Let's see. And then, just like the other side, sorry, um, two clips on the right and then a red clip and a pad on the center. So you remember that red clip on the passenger side? Well, pulling out the driver's side, I realized it probably wasn't aftermarket. I don't know why it's red, but I wanted to show you how cool these tools are. This is that pair of pliers that I've got. It applies pressure right around the edges and then hooks on the clip and I'm hoping that it comes out in one shot. Yeah, so I get the clip back unharmed. The next step is to go and get this plastic panel pried back 
out of the way and you start by removing the permanent push clips that are part of the panel all along this edge and you can see I started doing that um, the last time I looked at this before I realized how much work it was going to be to take out the back panel. So I'm going to continue that with my pliers that are meant just for this purpose. There's a little plastic guard on the stiffener back here behind this panel and it just pops off. And it has to get out of the way in order for the panel for the seatbelt to come loose. Well, I'm inside the car again, where the seat should be. In my opinion, totally worth the effort. And the back, there's a 10 millimeter bolt right there. You have to take out in order to make this panel come free. The bottom of the side plastic panel is trapped a little bit underneath the kick plate that runs along the bottom of the door. So to get it, you just have to pull it up from the bottom. So this is where all this work comes into play because I've got the plastic panel free. I can get to the seatbelt. As you can see, the seatbelt mechanism itself is still trapped behind the side panel that runs all along the back. So the whole reason for all that removal was just to get to this moment where you can reach behind the end of the panel without damaging it and get the seat belt out. This is definitely the type of plastic that if you bend it, you're going to create a white mark that never goes away. So you've got to get the lift, the end of it up out of the way of all this cabling without damaging the cabling. And then once you get it free, you can pry it out of the way, but you've got to be careful not to put some kind of permanent mark in it from prying on it too hard. Well, now everything's a mess. Trying to figure out how to move things around instead of completely removing them. So I pulled the back panel up without popping it free from that side, pulled it up from uh, without popping it free from this side, and now I can totally access the seat belt. So that's cool. I saved myself a lot of pulling stuff in and out, a few more bolts. And the real challenge was I could never quite figure out how to get those clips on the very back corner out of the way. I removed that 10 millimeter bolt, but that thing still tucked tight and I was really worried about it being ugly if I hurt it along the way. So I started pulling on it. Here's the downside. I yanked on it pretty hard and I put a little crease right there in the corner of the plastic panel. So I'm gonna put it back together and hope that doesn't show much and I'll let you know how it works out. But be real careful when you're doing this because that is the weak point that I was trying to avoid. back panel went back in nicely. The total damage that I did is that little crack right there. I hope my wife never sees this video. I thought you'd like to see the side panel just because I didn't show you how the clips come out. So this is what the inside of it all looks like and that hangs down on these slots and so you push it down into the slots and then snap it in sideways. So to get that trim panel in Sorry about the blood. Um, you've got to snap all these side pieces in to their connectors first because part of the trim panel fits into this notch. So on the trim panel, there's a little hook right here and a little hook at the other end and they got to go in here and in this notch. And then you, once you push those in, you're able to pull the, the snap steps into place, but I can't do it with one hand. When you're trying to get this plastic panel to go back in one of the things I had trouble with was the weather stripping so you got to make sure that you pull it up out of the way where the clips won't be able to engage all the way from bottom to top I turned off the camera so neither you nor my wife would see me use a rubber mallet to knock this piece hard enough to get it to sit and now the weather stripping is just like it ought to be this top 
section that has the captured 14 millimeter bolt has a little tab on it that indexes it and holds it in the right orientation. You gotta shoot that inside there. The bolt is built into the part. When it's installed, it stands off from the wall enough to let this move and have the driver change its angle to make them more comfortable. So the bolt head has a narrow piece with no threads and an offset at the back that's the standoff from the wall and then the threaded section. And all that screws right in there. As you can see where the offset mates up against the wall of the car and causes it to stick out. I say all this because I kept trying to think I had it misaligned, but then I checked the passenger side and saw that's how it stands over there too. So that's how it looks installed for the second time just to make very sure. And it is torqued down tight. Now I'm moving on to the bolt at the floor anchor. So the belt's installed with the seat still out, both bolts torqued down tight, and even though this belt seems to act just like the other one, it retracts, retracts like a brand new belt auto. I don't know if you remember from the beginning of this video three hours ago, but the belt did not pull back in, it was just in a pile on the seat every time my wife got in the car. So looks like at least I'll get credit for the fix. Got to put the little panels back in the trunk area and I took out these little fittings and you just shove them back in but the little mushroom head is up, snap them down and that's all there is to putting them back. So that's back in place and now I drop in the panel. If you mix the panels up like me, you find the one that says left hand you notice that there's a spot that is just a dead hole with no snip clip and that's what goes back there in the corner lines up like this all right i told you a long time ago that this back panel on the stiffening member just comes right off and so i thought i'd just at least show you what that means the clips on the side that face the wall just slide in right and then here, if I can get the lighting right, these clips are little hooks, right? Not much pressure, there's nowhere to push. And so all you do is set this on top of there so that it's setting away from the wall and tap it. And so then it's stuck and you just slide left to get rid of it. Well, everything I took apart is back together. The seat belt's in place. I'd love to turn the car on and find out if there's any airbag codes set by me messing around with the seat belt, but I'm terrified that having the seat squib unplugged from the bottom of the driver's seat will throw codes. So I'm gonna wait and get all that done right now. So it's time to throw the driver's seat back in. You remember when I started this, I got a little overzealous and started ripping clips off the bottom of the seat so that didn't need to be unclipped. This one up here is still eh, 50%. It's definitely gonna hold that in place as well as it needs to just to keep it from getting run over by the seat track. These guys on the other hand, I messed them up pretty bad. So rather than try and reuse those guys, I'm gonna get a new zip clip, zip tie, and I'm gonna run it through there, and I'm gonna run it through there, and right over the loop. I also removed the clip that I had to cut from the actual wiring harness that needed to be removed and I prepared it with another zip tie so that I can secure it to that spot once the seat's in an uncomfortable position. And if you're going to get this far and you're not going to vacuum the floor, then you're probably not still watching this video anymore because you don't have my OCD tendencies.
Much better. On a side note, what is that green stuff back there behind the gas pedal? Not gonna chase it today. Before you drop in the seat, be sure to set the wiring cable up out of the way because the last thing you want to do is set that seat track down and crush it at this point. So I got the seat completely reinstalled. The seat belt works like new and there were no codes thrown on the dash um, from me taking out the pretensioner and replacing it. So everything went exactly as planned and my wife is perfectly happy. I hope that helped you some way. Take care.